So the total amount I have to pay out of pocket for next semester is... Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Afton. I am currently a sophomore in college attending the Kansas City Art Institute. Today I'm going to talk about just merit scholarships in general, what my high school grades and extracurriculars look like, my portfolio in my essay for art school. I'm going to show you guys some of my current work and one of my more recent applications um, to Hallmark and SCIC. So yeah, whether you are a freshman or a senior in high school right now or even in middle school just thinking about applying to colleges, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it's helpful for you. So remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already and you can find my current artwork on my Instagram account at affydraws on Instagram and let's hop right into the video. There are a lot of different types of scholarships you can get such as outside scholarships or need-based scholarships or grants through the FAFSA, all of these things you do not have to pay back, whereas loans you do have to pay back. But a merit scholarship is usually one that the school looks at your grades, your essay, and your portfolio to determine how much they would like to give you in a scholarship. Now, depending on place to place, a merit scholarship can look vastly different. For instance, I applied to UMKC, and I think I got like $12,000 in merit scholarship there, although their tuition is a lot lower than at KCAI, which is a private arts college. And other art colleges I hear, such as RISD, doesn't give out as much merit scholarship. And whenever I applied to SEIC, I only got half tuition, which is still pretty good, but at KCAI, I'm getting most of my tuition paid off. So in high school, I will say my senior year, I definitely was like very stressed out and I was doing the IBCP program, but I did not apply to as many outside scholarships as I could have. I definitely applied to too many schools that I didn't care about, which is really adding a lot of stress. If you're currently a senior in high school or going to be applying for colleges soon, I definitely say only pick a few colleges you want to apply for. Do not stress yourself out by just randomly applying to a place because it maybe looks good. Do your research first and that takes out a load of stress later. In my junior year of high school, I thought I was going to do the IB diploma, so I did take quite a few IB classes such as IB psychology, English, film, art, math, and yeah, I think that's it along with the IB zero hour and then i decided that was a bit too much stress for me especially just applying to art colleges so i then transferred to the ibcp program but i think ib at the time it was kind of annoying for me but looking back it is a really good way ib and ap are really good ways to not only get a boost on your gpa and challenge yourself and potentially get college credit but it's also a good way to show colleges that you are challenging yourself because I think that is one really important thing. Getting a C in an IB class is a lot better than getting an A in an unweighted class because it shows that you are trying to push yourself. So overall, my weighted GPA was a 4.16 and my unweighted GPA was a 3.78. I graduated in the top 5% being at 28 out of 439 people and I took the ACT twice. The first time I got a 22, which it's all right, but I definitely wanted a higher score. So the second time I took a tw I got a 26. ACT definitely, I'm not a good test person. Um, stressed me the heck out. The math portion for some reason always tripped me up. Even though I got a B and IB math, I just could not do the simple math portion of the ACT, but whatever. I don't know if every state offers it, but doing the program such as the A plus program, I think is really helpful to get some community service in. And also a lot of colleges will give you an A plus scholarship as well because they want you to go to their college and they don't want you to go to a community college, which is what the A plus program pays for. So IB test score wise, I ended up taking three IB tests, including the English, the arts, and the psychology tests. I got fives on the English IB test and the art IB kind of portfolio section, and then I got a six on the IB psychology test. Although I was a one point away from getting a six on the IB English test, I think my grader was just wanting to bully me that day. 
of course in high school it's not only fun but it's important to add extracurriculars to your applications so i was involved in the theater program um the thespian club program i mainly did like crew and stuff i was in the art club national art honor society i was in um national honor society which is a community service club. My friend, our junior year, started the photography club at our school, so we were the presidents of it, and I think it was a good way to show leadership and that we could take initiative on our applications. In my senior year, I also did a digital media program at another school, but it was kind of connected to my school, and it was a really fun way to learn about cameras and editing and programs such as Logic, and it showed, I think, that I was really interested in creating art and film. So grade-wise, a lot of people think that if you are applying to a portfolio-heavy department or curriculum such as art or film, that grades don't matter as much, but they definitely do, especially if you want to get a good scholarship. I have friends who got really, really great grades and like a 30-something on the ACT, and they got like 126 thousand dollars in scholarship um, but it's all a balance honestly because I also have friends who did average in school and they had a killer portfolio and they also got a very high scholarship as well but I would just say do the best you can on grades another note on IB and AP classes I feel like looking back it really did help prepare me for college classes, um, such as my art history class in college, um, art history one, a survey class, it was pretty intense, but it was very similar to my IB English class and how we had to do lots of reading and lots of memorization in my IB English class of like Sylvia Plath poetry. Um, in this class, we had to do identifications for different art pieces, you had to do a correct spelling on everything, you had to be able to name the date range or date on the piece, the time period, the name of the piece, and provide a description of the piece, which is very similar to the IB Art Research portfolio section. So I really highly encourage you to at least take one IB or AP class if you can. They also count as college credit. I think I got 12 credits um, of like both elective and liberal arts, something like that for college, which is always great because then those are credits you can get out of the way and you can take other classes instead that are more fun. So now I want to walk you guys through my portfolio and my essay. I'm not super duper proud of both of them, but of course, you know, it was senior year. I was kind of struggling at the time I wanted to go to CalArts actually, so I was focused on my CalArts sketchbook and KCAI was kind of my fallback school. Um, doesn't mean it's bad, it just means CalArts, you know, it was CalArts so <laughs> I do admit I have asked that sketchbook. However, I think it is good now, I guess, that I'm not as proud of my work because I feel like that shows improvement. Maybe I just don't like my work from high school. <laughs> so for some reason on my slide room, it doesn't have the KCAI um, portfolio I submitted, which is weird. I'm pretty sure I submitted it through Slide Room. Slide Room. But it does have my PNCA portfolio, which for the most part, I submitted similar artworks across the board for the colleges because, um, you know, that's the art I had. <laughs> so a lot of the images I put in here are from my sketchbook, which isn't a bad thing. Definitely, number one, I'd say my top tips for your portfolio. Number one, make sure the photos of all of your artwork is really good and like how you would want it to pre be presented on like a website or in a gallery because even if you make a great piece of work, if the photo is not that great. It's not representing your art to the best it can. There's no shame in using Photoshop or Lightroom to edit your work and actually that's what they have us do in college to get us ready for submitting work to magazines or news articles. So don't be afraid to edit your work. And also since you're editing it, it's your work, okay? So no stigma, no shame. As long as you're not lying and being like, yes, I built this 10 foot sculpture and it's actually like this big, but then you just like cropped it to be this big. Like that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about like presentation. My family's getting home, so they're very loud. Okay, tip number two is show a variety of artwork. A lot of art schools wanna see that you have technical ability 
as well as conceptual ability. So what I mean by that is show that you are practicing figure drawing, show that you have a good understanding of perspective and lines and color and space. So doing still lives is always good. Doing figure studies with different amounts of time. So like a five minute, 10 minute, 20 minute figure study. If you attended any art competitions, you can include that and talk about your art competition and if you won anything, I don't know, if you like the work, think it represents you well. I also included short films and videos that I made in my IB film class um, because I am interested in film and it does show that you are experimenting with other mediums. I think that is my third tip. Show that you are experimenting with other mediums. You want to show, you want to show to schools that you have potential to grow and are not afraid to experiment. Okay, fourth tip is show that you have an understanding of your conceptual meaning in your artwork. So it's important to put in technical things like I drew this building to show you I can draw buildings, but also show like I painted this portrait of this person because I wanted to show their story and um, or like something political. Just show engagement with I guess kind of social practice type stuff or to show engagement with um, that you're thinking deeply about your artwork instead of just I guess drawing or painting what you think is pretty. They want to see the layers of your personality. Okay, honestly, looking back at my art portfolio, it's pretty bad. So if I can do it, you can do it, okay? Like, I'm really not proud of this. But hey, I am glad it got me a good scholarship. Okay, another tip. I don't know what number I am on, but another tip. Show process pictures if the process is important and integral into making your work. And maybe show processes and how you think about in your sketchbook. I think art schools really want to see how you think and how you problem solve through a creative situation. Don't be afraid to submit multiple images in one image. So what I did for my newest portfolio was I literally just put images into a Google Slides presentation and then downloaded the Google Slide and then uploaded it as long as it looks, you know, good resolution and stuff quality you can also just do this through like photoshop or any photo editor but yeah that's something i didn't really understand i didn't get that you could put like basically collage multiple photos into one maybe that's just like a me thing maybe everyone's like yeah i knew that but i didn't so it might be helpful <laughs> so the first two slides for this portfolio was just a finger painting of Dodie clark because i like Dodie clark thought it was interesting that it was a finger painting i went over it with charcoal um, the next two slides are two portraits I did for my series where I painted people in my hometown, which I think um, showed the conceptual side that I was interested in telling people's stories, and I painted the people in a way I thought would represent them. The next piece I put in was a piece that I won second place in in a competition, art competition, um, with multiple schools. We had like an hour and a half or so to like do a painting of the still life, so that was cool. And then the next two slides I did a full picture and then a close-up picture of this piece I made that was supposed to look like this 3D moving movie poster. I collected a bunch of rulers and stacked them and like glued these hands on different layers so it looks like they were like coming towards you. Thought it was pretty cool. Um, and then I did a painting of my friends and I put that in there. And then I put in three drawings of figures and then some people and then three short films, one being a stop motion and one being about German expressionism and another just being one I wrote. I mean, I wrote all of them. You know what I mean? So I want to really walk you through my news portfolio, um, specifically the one I submitted to SAIC last June. Last June being a few months ago June. It just I don't know, you know what I mean? It feels like a long time ago. Um, because I did apply, I was looking to transfer because, you know, um, not that KCAI is a bad school, but basically I was just looking for a school that's more interdisciplinary, had um, fashion program and stuff like that, but just based on the money, um, even though they did give me half tuition, it was still not enough, and I would have had to take out loans, and I'm really trying to avoid loans for my undergrad, so. I ended up rejecting them again for the second time. I'm sorry, SCIC. <laughs> Don't hate me because I'm probably going to apply for your master's program. But I'm a lot more proud of this portfolio because I feel like just going through a year of art school really had helped me 
learn about presentation of artwork and just getting a better grasp of what visual styles I like in general. Oh, another tip, tip time. Another tip that's really important is make sure that your art portfolio tells a story and that the reviewers can look at it and be like, yes, this is made by one person. Like I, I can tell this person, like this looks like one person made it. You know what I mean? Not that you can't have multiple styles or submit a variety of things because you should, but tell a visual story with your artwork. So the first slide was just some fashion concepts. These were actually two different ones I put on Pro Procreate and put them together in one slide. So that's what I kind of was talking about earlier. Um, and then I had more fashion sketches and an illustration of these ladies with long necks because um, why not? And then my third one is a fashion collage that um, I made for my body coverings workshop, which is a fashion workshop I took the spring semester of my freshman year at art school. And our teacher wanted us to collage together some outfits that we thought we could make for our third project. Um, I think this is a good example of showing process because process can still be part of the artwork and still be an artwork itself. Another good example of process is this fire. I should probably leave more space right here because I'm probably gonna put it here. <laughs> Another good example of process is this fire inspired dress I made where I first did the concept art for it and then I um, used a sewing pattern for the corset. I totally BS'd the skirt, um, but I thought it ended up pretty cool. I, as you can tell, I'm trying to put like things together, so the next few slides are fashion slides. So this is another example of putting multiple images on one slide, which is my concept of less versus more um, garment design I made for the class. And the next, next one was a jumpsuit I made totally without a sewing pattern, I just kind of based it off of my own clothes I had, and then a few masks I made. And then I added some other ones that were like technical, so this house, and then um, did some character art ones. This one is Sabrina, because I love Sabrina. And then I drew a, um, I made this ceramic vessel for my vessel body identity class. Still crazy that I made that because I literally took ceramics in high school, got a B. I should have probably gotten an F though, because I was really bad. I think my teacher was just nice. And then um, she had a straw, our vessels, and charcoal. The next one is actually being used as an album cover for a real band. I think it is a good example to put in here. And then the next two slides are from my miniatures class. The first one being some dolls I made from my miniatures class that I hand sewed and made out of felt. And then the other one is a miniature room that I made. Also, don't be afraid to include digital art. A lot of this is digital art. Just make sure to include traditional art as well. My family is yelling again. I don't know if you can hear them, but oh well. <laughs> I included some drawings of animals because I think it's important to show that you're not afraid to draw um, non-humans. I am still kind of intimidated by drawing animals. They tend to look like clouds with legs, but you know, hey, it's okay. This next slide of the water bottles is showing how I'm taking different concepts and illustrations of water bottles I did and then turning it into a pattern. So I think showing different ways that you can almost commercialize, I guess, your artwork um, and showing how you can use your art for multiple things, I think is pretty good. And then I included this photograph I took of inside of a cardboard box because I thought it was pretty. I use it at the end of my YouTube videos right now. I kind of want to get a new photo actually, but for now, this is the photo I use for the end of my YouTube videos. And yeah, it's literally just cardboard box with lights in it. Pretty simple. And then the last one is my favorite. It also was one that the lady from Hallmark interviewed me about. I mean, she interviewed me about the whole portfolio, but she really liked this one because I think it shows multi levels of process where I took photos of my friend in different outfits and then I color graded or edited them in Lightroom and then I brought it into Photoshop and then I drew over and drew illustrations. All the illustrations you see here I actually drew on paper and then I scanned in to Photoshop and then layered everything together and then edited it some more and then put it in Procreate and then printed it on stone tinge paper and wanted it to look like fun editorial photo photographs. I'm out of breath. I'm actually trying to film this really quickly because I filmed it the first time and I really hated it because I felt like it was just boring and 
I talk like robot. But yeah, I gotta work in like an hour. <laughs> I don't want to. Like and subscribe so my job can be YouTube. Seriously though, that'd be nice. But I felt like that portfolio was a really good example to show because SEIC actually emailed me and asked my permission to reproduce and use that portfolio to show and use as examples for to other students on how to make a portfolio or something like that. I don't know. Um, I didn't end up giving them permission because um, first of all, I decided not to go there, which would be weird. But even if I did, um, I asked them if they would give me credit and they never responded and I think that's not cool. So I'm going to read this artist statement pretty quickly. It's kind of long. My tips for artist statement is to, first of all, one tip I got from a college counselor was to not be super afraid of like your writing because I feel like it's easy to overthink everything you put down. Literally just write everything and then go back and edit. Also, that is a tip for art as well. You cannot create and edit at the same time. Those actions are separate. That is what my foundation teacher told me <laughs> and I, I think it's pretty true actually. Second tip is don't write what you think the colleges want to hear. Be honest and the more specific to you and honest to you you make it, the more it's going to stand out and um, show your unique personality and interests and how you would be a good fit for the school and because really the school is looking for creative and unique individuals that will enhance their programs and the people around them and just the overall work that comes out of the school because as a student when they admit you you are a rep like in a way a representative of the school i think a third tip i have for the artist statement is if you would like mention artists that inspire you so they have a good idea of who you look up to and maybe what kind of work you want to make in the future and talk about just other passions and how your other interests go into your creative process. I mean really it's all about the process but definitely with everything show potential for growth because that's why you go to school is to learn and to grow. Um, okay, I'll get into it now. Like many artists who want to pursue art as a career, my passion for my passion for art sprouted when I was very young. Ever since, my love for art has taken many forms, from fashion to expression to storytelling. I love the ways that art can express ideas or emotions that words cannot. I love using expressive lines and colors to emote complex feelings that I have that are difficult to let out elsewhere. elsewhere. Many times I get lost in the world of painting or an illustration as I imagine how the lines and colors speak to each other or envision the story of a character I'm creating. I draw inspiration from the human figure, fashion, plants, stories, colors, emotions, dance, psychology, and films. Through my work, I try to convey a concept or a story. I love art that brings the viewer into a scene and creates curiosity for what is happening. I remember going to the Leica Studios exhibit at Portland Art Museum, at the Portland Art Museum, I cannot read, <laughs> and being blown away by the creativity and design of the characters in the settings. I feel like film is one of the most compelling forms of art and storytelling because it can reach larger audiences and seem more realistic than other art forms because it carries audible and visual aspects. I find films so complex and I love to analyze the intricate details that are presented within them, whether it be lighting, editing, mise-en-scene, or camera work. I tend to be drawn towards abstract art, even though I typically, I cannot say that word, make representational works. <laughs> I love the flow and emotion that abstract art provides. I tend to focus more on doing miniature pieces and jotting down ideas for films or stories into my sketchbook. I treat my sketchbooks as if they are a journal and cultivate projects and ideas through them. I love having a sketchbook because it feels like a truer representation of who I am than what is perceived from acquaintances I know. I also enjoy flipping through it and living in the worlds and images that I have created. I also hope to study psychology and dance sometime in the future as well. I'm extremely fascinated with how the brain and the mind work, and I hope that I could use that knowledge in films or artwork I'm creating. I would also- I say also a lot in this, I just noticed. I would also love to study dance because I enjoy the feeling and expression of movement along with how beautifully the art form is portrayed. I feel like it would give me a deeper understanding of the human body and how it interacts with the space around it. I have fun experimenting with different mediums and techniques as well. I have created a sculpture based off of a continuous line drawing of a figure, made a three-dimensional movie poster, and did a portrait of Cole Sprouse from a magazine pages. I love working expressively and using a variety of color and brush strokes. 
I want to work more on creating storyboards, concept artwork, illustrations, and animations. Through my art, I wish to create work that entertains, inspires, evokes thoughts, and positively adds to society. Yeah. <laughs> I think my artist statement back then was pretty repetitive, um, but I think it is good to talk about your goals as an artist and show you do want to experiment. Lastly, I just wanted to mention, get a letter of recommendation from a teacher who knows you as an artist and who can speak on your creative practice. I got my letter of recommendation from my digital media teacher, IB psychology teacher, and my IB art teacher, of course. Um, IB psych because I did really well in her class and <laughs> it kind of shows that I am a good student, I guess. <laughs> Lastly, I wanted to tell you guys how much I pay out of pocket for tuition every semester. I am paying for my education by myself. Um, I do get child support every month of $500, but that is going to end when I turn 21. Um, so I am working 21 hours a week right now to support myself. And the only time I took out loans was freshman year so I could live in the dorms. But this year I'm living at home and I didn't take out any loans and it kind of is the same cost actually. I took out $5,500 last year in loans, but I plan to not take out any more loans through the rest of my education and I plan to pay that off before I graduate. So I can graduate debt free. So I have paid all of my tuition for this past fall semester, but it has updated for my spring semester. So the total amount I have to pay out of pocket for next semester is $4,910. So I do use a payment plan um, on the TMS system we use. You do have to pay a $50 fee for the payment plan, but for the five month payment plan, that is $982 a month, which is a lot, but honestly, I feel like for private art school, it's not too bad, especially with work and stuff. But I really wanted to make this video because I know that I was very lost <laughs> my senior year. Um, I mainly watched the CalArts sketchbook videos, which probably was not good for my mental health because it made me feel bad. But I really wanted to show that this is achievable. I mean, I feel like I did good, good I did get good grades in high school, but it's not like I graduated top 1% or anything. I didn't get a great ACT. I got a pretty average ACT of 26. And the first time I literally, like, the first pre-ACT I took, it was 19. So I really want to help you guys who are in high school to give you some guidance, I guess, and show that it is possible to get a good scholarship. Um, if this video has helped you out or you just liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I am trying to post a video at least every week. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions that or anything I just didn't touch on in this video. I definitely can make future ones about college. I will try to reply to your comments as best I can. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.